Hello, I'm Ken Johnson, and welcome to the New Hope Reads Ministry. We hope you will visit daily as we read from the Chronological Bible. May our time spent together in God's Word be a blessing to us all as God reveals Himself and His nature, as He opens our minds, and as He prepares our hearts for our good and His service. Again, thank you for joining us. June 21st, Amos' ministry began during the reigns of King Uzziah of Judah and King Jeroboam II of Israel. The Prophecy of Amos, Amos 1, 1 and 2. This message was given to Amos, a shepherd from the town of Tekoa in Ju Judah. He received this message in visions two years before the earthquake when Uzziah was king of Judah and Jeroboam II, the son of Jehoash, was king of Israel. This is what he saw and heard. The Lord's voice will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The lush pastures of the shepherds will dry up. The grass on Mount Carmel will wither and die. God's judgment on Israel's neighbors. Amos 1, 3 through 2, 3. This is what the Lord says. The people of Damascus have sinned against again and again, and I will not let them go unpunished. They beat down my people in Gilead as grain is threshed between iron, with iron sledges. So I will send down fire on King Hazel's palace, and the fortresses of ben, King Ben-Hadad will be destroyed. I will break down the gates of Damascus and slaughter the people in the valley of Avon. I will destroy the ruler in beth Aden, and the people of Aram will go, out, go as captives to Kerr, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. The people of Gaza have sinned again and again, and I will not let them go unpunished. They sent whole villages into exile, selling themselves, selling, themselves, selling them as slaves to Edom. So I will send down fire on the walls of Gaza, and all its fortresses will be destroyed. I will slaughter the people of Ashdod and destroy the king of Ashkelon. And then I will turn to attack Ekron, and the few Philistines still left will be killed says the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Lord says. The people of Tyre have sinned again and again, and I will not let them go unpunished. They broke their treaty of brotherhood with Israel, selling whole villages as slaves to Edom. So I will send down fire on the walls of Tyre, and all its fortresses will be destroyed. This is what the Lord says. The people of Edom have sinned again and again, and I will not let them go unpunished. They chased down their relatives, the Israelites, with swords, showing them no mercy. In their rage, they slashed them continually and were unrelenting in their anger. And so I will send down fire on Teman, and the fortresses of Basra will be destroyed. This is what the Lord says. The people of Ammon have sinned again and again, and I will not let them go unpunished. When they attacked Gilead to extend their borders, they ripped open pregnant women with their swords. So I will send down fire on the walls of Rabbah, and all its fortresses will be destroyed. The battle will, become up, will come upon them with shouts, like a whirlwind in a mighty storm. And their king and his princes will go into exile together, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. The people of Moab have sinned again and again. I will not let them go un unpunished. They have desecrated the bones of Edom's king, burning them to ashes. So I will send down fire on the land of Moab, and all the fortresses in Kirioth will be destroyed. The people will fall in the noise of battle as the warriors shout and the ram's horn sounds. And I will destroy their king and slaughter all their princes, says the Lord. God's judgment on Judah and Israel. Amos 2.4-3.2 this is what the Lord says. The people of Judah have sinned again and again, and I will not let them go unpunished. They have rejected the instructions of the Lord, refusing to obey his decrees. They have been led astray by the same lies they deceived, that deceived their ancestors. So I will send down fire on Judah 
and all the fortresses in Jerusalem will be destroyed. This is what the Lord says. The people of Israel have sinned again and again, and I will not let them go unpunished. They sell honorable people for silver and poor people for a pair of sandals. They trample helpless people in the dust and shove the oppressed out of the way. Both father and son sleep with the same woman, corrupting my holy name. At their religious festivals, they lounge in clothing their debtors put up as security. In the house of their gods, they drink wine brought, bought with unjust fines. But as my people watched, I destroyed the Amorites, though they were as tall as cedars and strong as oaks. I destroyed the fruit on their branches and dug out their roots. It was I who rescued you from Egypt and led you through the desert for 40 years so you could possess the land of the Amorites. I chose some of your sons to be prophets and others to be Nazarites. Can you deny this, my people of Israel? asked the Lord. But you caused the Nazarites to sin by making them drink wine, and you commanded the prophets, shut up. So I will make you groan like a wagon loaded down with sheaves of grain. Your fastest runners will not get away. Your, the strongest among you will become weak. Even mighty warriors will be unable to save themselves. The archers will not stand their ground. The strift, swiftest runners will, won't be fast enough to escape. Even those right riding horses won't be able to save yourselves. On that day, the most courageous of your fighting men will drop their weapons and run for their lives, says the Lord. Listen to the mess, this message that the Lord has spoken against you, O people of Israel, against the f entire family I have rescued from Egypt. From among all the families on the earth, I have been intimate with you alone. That is why I must punish you for all your sins. Witnesses against guilty Israel. Israel. Amos 3, 3 through 15. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? Does a lion ever roar in a thicket without first finding a victim? Does a young lion growl in its den without first catching its prey? Does a bird ever get caught in a trap that has no bait? Does a trap spring shut when there's nothing to catch? When the ram's horn blows a warning, shouldn't people be alarmed? Does disaster come to a city unless the Lord has planned it? Indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared, and who, so who isn't frightened? The sovereign Lord has spoken, so who can refuse to proclaim his, re his message? Announce this to the leaders of Philistia and to the great ones of Egypt. Take your seats now on the hills around Samaria and witness the chaos and oppression in Israel. My people have forgotten how to do right, says the Lord. Their fortresses are filled with wealth taken by theft and violence. Therefore, says the sovereign Lord, the an enemy is coming. He will surround them and shatter their defenses. Then he will plunder all their fortresses. This is what the Lord says. A shepherd who tries to rescue a sheep from a lion's mouth will recover only two legs or a piece of an ear. So it will be for the Israelites in Samaria lying on luxurious beds and for the people of Damascus re reclining on couches. Now listen to this and announce it throughout all Israel, says the Lord, the Lord God of heaven's armies. armies. On the very day I punish Israel for its sins, I will destroy the pagan altars at Bethel. The horns of the author will be cut off and fall to the ground, and I will destroy the beautiful homes of the wealthy, their winter mansions and their summer houses too, all their palaces filled with ivory. Israel's failure to learn. Amos 4, 1 through 13. Listen to me, you fat cows living in Samaria, you women who oppress the poor and crush the needy, and who are always calling to your husbands, bring us another drink. The sovereign Lord has sworn, sworn this by his holiness. The time will come when you'll be led away with hooks in your noses. Every last one of you will be dragged away like fish on a hook. You will be led out through the ruins of the wall, and you'll be thrown from your fortresses, says the Lord. Go ahead and offer sacrifices to the idols at Bethel. Keep on disobeying at Gilgal. Offer sacrifices each morning and bring your tithes every three days. Present your bread made with yeast as an offering for thanksgiving. Then give your extra voluntary offering so you can brag about it everywhere. This is the kind of thing you Israelites love to do, says the Sovereign Lord. 
I brought hunger to every city and famine to every town. Still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I kept the rain from falling when your crops needed it the most. I sent rain from on one town but withheld it from another. Rain fell on one field while another withered away. People staggered from town to town looking for water, but there was never enough. But still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I struck your farms and your vineyards with blight and mildew. Locusts devoured all your fig and olive trees, but still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I sent plagues on you like the plagues I sent on Egypt long ago. I killed your young men in war and led all your horses away. The stench of death filled the air. But still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I destroyed some of your cities as I destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Those of you who survived were like charred sticks full, pulled from a fire. But still you would not return to me, says the Lord. Therefore, I will bring upon you all the disasters I have announced. Prepare to meet your God in judgment, you people of Israel. For the Lord is the one who shaped the mountains, stirs up the winds, and reveals his thoughts to mankind. He turns the light of dawn into darkness and treads on the heights of the earth. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. A call to repentance, Amos 5, 1-17. through Listen, you people of Israel, listen to this funeral song I am singing. The virgin Israel has fallen never to rise again. She lies abandoned on the ground with no one to help her up. The sovereign Lord says, when a city sends a thousand men to battle, only a hundred will return. When a town sends a hundred, only ten will come back alive. Now this is what the Lord says to the family of Israel. Come back to me and live. Don't worship at the pagan altars at Bethel. Don't go to the shrines at Gilgal or Beersheba. For the people of Gilgal will be drived off, dragged off into exile, and the people of Bethel will be reduced to nothing. Come back to the Lord and live. Otherwise, he will roar through Israel like a fire, devouring you completely. Your gods in Bethel will not be able to quench the flames. You twist justice, justice making it a bitter pill for the oppressed. You treat the righteous like dirt. It is the Lord who created the stars, the Pleiades and Orion. He turns darkness into morning and day into night. He draws up water from the oceans and pours it down as rain on the land. The Lord is his name. With blinding speed and power, he draw, destroys the strong, crushing all their defenses. How you ate, hate honest judges. How you despise people who tell the truth. You trample the poor, stealing their grain through taxes and unfair rent. Therefore, though you build beautiful stone houses, you will never live in them. Though you plant lush vineyards, you will never drink wine from them. For I know the vast number of your sins and the depth of your rebellions. You oppress good people by taking bribes and deprive the poor of justice in their courts. So those who are smart keep their mouth shut, for it is an evil time. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord of heaven's armies will be your helper just as you've claimed. Hate evil and love what is good. Turn your courts into true halls of justice. Perhaps even yet the Lord God of heaven's armies will have mercy on the remnant of his people. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the, the Lord, of, the Lord God of heaven's armies says. They will be crying in all the public squares and mourning in every street. Call for the farmers to weep with you and summon professional mourners to wail. Warning of coming, ju coming judgment, Amos five eighteen through six fourteen. What sorrow awaits you who say, "If only the day of the Lord were here!" You have no idea what you're wishing for. That day will bring darkness, not light. And that day you will be like a man who runs from a lion, only to meet a bear. Escaping from the bear, he leans his hand against a wall in his house, and he's bitten by a snake. Yes, the day of the Lord will be dark and hopeless without a ray of hope. I hate all your show and pretense, the hypocrisy of your religious festivals and solemn assemblies. I will not accept your burnt offerings and grain offerings. I won't even notice all your choice peace offerings. Away, will your no away with your noisy hymns of praise. I will not listen to the music of your harps. Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice, an endless river of righteous living. 
Was it to me you were bringing sacrifices and offerings during the 40 years in the wilderness, Israel? No, you served your pagan gods, Sakuth, your king god, and Kaiwan, your star god, the images you made for yourselves. So I will send you into exile to a land east of Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of heaven's armies. What sorrow awaits you who lounge in luxury in Jerusalem and you who feel secure in Samaria. You are famous and popular in Israel and people go to you for help. But go over to Kalna and see what happened there. Then go to the great city of Hamath and down to the Philistine city of Gath. You know better than they were and look at how they were destroyed. You push away every thought of coming disaster, but your actions only bring the day of judgment closer. How terrible for you who sprawl on ivory beds and lounge on your couches, eating the meat of tender lambs from the flock and of choice calves fattened in the stall. You sing trivial songs to the sound of the harp and fancy yourselves to be great musician, musicians like David. You drink wine by the bowlful and perfume, your, perfume yourselves with fragrant lotions. You care nothing about the ruin of your nation. Therefore, you will be the first to be led away as captives, Suddenly, all your parties will end. The sovereign Lord has sworn by his own name, and this is what he, the Lord God of heaven army, says. I despise the arrogance of Israel, and I hate their fortresses. I will give this city and everything in it to their enemies. If there are ten men left in one house, they will all die. And when a relative who is responsible to dispose of the dead goes into the house to carry out the bodies, he will ask the last survivor, Is anyone else with you? When the person begins to swear no by, he will interrupt and say, Stop, don't even mention the name of the Lord. When the Lord gives the command, homes both great and small will be smashed to pieces. Can horses gallop over boulders? Can oxen be used to plow them? But that's how foolish you are when you turn justice into poison and the free, sweet fruit of righteousness into bitterness. And you brag about your conquest of Lodabar. You boast, didn't we take Karnaim by our own strength? O people of Israel, I am about to bring an army nation against an enemy nation against you, says the Lord God of heaven's armies. They will oppress you throughout your land, from Lebo Hamath in the north to the Arabah Valley in the south. Hi there, and welcome to New Hope Reads. I'm Mark Roof, and we are delighted that you've joined us to share in the reading of God's Word. It's very important that we share this together and be in God's Word daily. And by the way, we'd like to invite you to join us here at New Hope Church of Christ anytime you get a chance. Sunday mornings, we have classes at 9.30, we have worship at 10.30, and you can join us live or online. Have a blessed day.